This video is just a general overview of the appendicular skeleton. Now the appendicular skeleton includes your girdles and your limbs. These bones function in like grasping and manipulating objects and of course locomotion. Starting with your pectoral girdle, which is the point of attachment for your upper limbs. This consists of the scap scapula and the clavicle. And you'll notice on the scapula, for instance, the clavicle attaches to the scapula at the acromion. Um, there's also what is called the glenoid fossa on the scapula, which is where the head of the humerus articulates. Um, there's also the subscapular fossa on the anterior surface of the scapula. Um, and of course, the clavicle is your collarbone. Your upper limb bones include your humerus, your ulna, and your radius. Your humerus um, can be characterized by what are called a greater and lesser tubercle. There's also the deltoid tuberosity, which remember is just this roughened projection as well as the tubercle. A tuberosity is just a much larger tubercle. There's also the lateral and medial epicondyle and condyles remember are just these really um, rounded articular surfaces and an epicondyle is just a proximal um, feature to a condyle. Um, the humerus also has what's called a capitulum, which is just another type of um, articular surface. It also has what's known as the olecranon fossa and the trochlea, which are going to ultimately articulate with the um, olecranon and trochlear notch of the ulna. So the ulna, of course, is characterized by that C because the ulna is a portion of your elbow. And so the olecranon process articulates with the olecranon fossa of the humerus. Um, it also has, the ulna has a, a coronoid process as well as a styloid process. And of course, those styloid processes are going to um, articulate with your carpals. Um, the radius is characterized by a radial head as well as a radial tuberosity and the radial, what's called a radial styloid process. So just make sure that you can characterize the difference between them and distinguish them. The ulna has a C, the radius has the radial head, and the humerus has a very indistinguishable um, or very distinguishable, excuse me, head, but it also has, for instance, the deltoid tuberosity. The manus are the bones of your hand. Uh, your hand is called a manus. The carpals are your wrist bones. They're sort of um, organized into three longitudinal columns. The radial scaphoid column includes the scaphoid, the trapezium, and the trapezoid. There's also the lunate column, which contains the lunate and the capitate. The ulnar trochetral column includes the trochetrum with the uh, pisiform and the hamate. Metacarpals are located between your carpals and your phalanges, and there are three regions. There is the body or the shaft, the head or the caput, and of course the base is also called the carpal extremity. There are your phalanges, which are your fingers or your digits. There are three regions. There's the proximal, distal, and medial, or middle region. And then your thumb is called your pollux. Your pelvic girdle, also sometimes called an innominate bone, also sometimes called a hip bone or a coxal bone, is characterized by the ilium, ischium, and the pubis, as well as the obturator foramen and the pubic symphysis and the acetabulum, which is where the femur articulates with your pelvic girdle. Your lower limbs, of course, include your femur, which once again articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvic girdle. The femur is in essence just your thigh bone that's characterized by a trochanter, a gluteal tuberosity, a linea aspera, and the patellar surface. So these are all um, features of a femur that are particular for the femur, especially the trochanter. You can't find a trochanter on any of the other bones. Um, the tibia is called your shin bone, characterized by the malleolus, an anterior crest, and a tibial tuberosity. And then the fibula is your calf bone. And so the best way that I can tell you guys to distinguish your tibia from your femur and your humerus is that the tibia um, 
doesn't have a head like either the humerus or the femur, which makes it pretty distinguishable. The fibula doesn't have a radial head or a C. And so if you don't see a C like that of the ulna or a radial head like that of the radius, and you're looking at a smaller bone, then you are in, um, in essence looking at a fibula. Ending with the foot or the pedal bones, the calcaneus is your heel. The tarsals make up your ankle. They are characterized by cuneiforms, the navicular and the talus. The metatarsals, like in your hand, consist of a body, a head, and a base. And your phalanges consist of a proximal, middle, and distal portion, and your great toe, toe is called a hallux. So that is it for the appendicular skeleton.